What is going on, folks? My name is Quentin Crisco. Find me on Twitter at Stats. Make sure to go check out my podcast, Shaving Points Podcast. I also do a podcast called Bears on Tap for On Tap Sportsnet. And check out my writing at On Tap Sportsnet. Today, we are getting ready for the Chicago Bears matchup with the Detroit Lions for Sunday. I'm going to take a look at the Detroit Lions defense and a bunch of stuff that stood out to me. Let's go. The first thing that I really noticed on this Detroit defense was you can you can abuse the linebackers in coverage, especially number 34 right here, Anzalone, Anzalone. He gets sucked in on the play action, and maybe this could be how the coaching tells their linebackers to react to play action, but he gets sucked in hard on the play action, and with how much man coverage they run, you can create a lot of separation off of it by attacking the linebackers' uh, coverage assignments. We see 89 peeling out this way. Anzalone's supposed to be covering 89, but he's already come so far downhill on the play action that he doesn't he doesn't stand a chance to make up this this separation here. That, I mean, even just laterally, he's already got a, a step or two on him. And it's just nice, easy throw because he is out of position. Number 34, Anzalone. Watch him on this play. See how far he stepped down on the running back and it's just easy first down from there. Find our guy, number 34. So Anzalone's got the running back man coverage on this play no play action he doesn't even get downhill he just gets caught up in the mesh here and just struggles to flow through it and even this that's just a lot of traffic you put Anzalone through some traffic see number 34 right here and we, we can watch both linebackers but I'm, they, they really targeted 34 on this one so Watch him come down on the play action. And his depth is just all out of whack and he's panicking the whole time. See the receiver's running this way. And he's actually running out of coverage. If he's running straight back, he'd be running to where the ball might go. He doesn't have a strong feel for his zones. For where the ball's gonna go. He just his instincts and in pass coverage aren't great. Anzalone right here. And this one's real similar to the last one. Where no play action, but he thinks he sees what's happening, and he he just he dives in over to here. Then DK is just gonna run right around him. His change of direction, his recovery isn't isn't very strong. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the outside coverage. So I want you to focus in on this matchup here. Just go route. This is DK. This is Jeff Okuda. They're just playing straight man coverage. I think it's cover one. Okuda struggled with DK all game. This was the DK Metcalf game. He had like 150 yards, I think. And you hope that you can see, see Claypool beat the man coverage the way DK did. I mean, they're similar size, similar speed. Obviously, Claypool is not DK, but he's about as close as you can get to him in the NFL right now, size, speed, athleticism-wise. So I'd really like to see the Bears try to use Claypool against this man coverage, even if it's Okuda, who's having an, a solid year after a few disappointing seasons. We get another look at DK versus Okuda. So we got we got the two of them lined up right here. Press man coverage, believe this is cover one again. And this time, Okuda does a better job of just staying sticky, but Smith places the ball where DK can get it. And this one is just confusion. Titan's gonna leak out over here off of play action and just be left wide open. This, this coverage unit seemed to have a lot of miscommunications in, in this game. I believe this is before they fired their, uh, their DB coach. So maybe that's cleared up, but like you should never be that wide open in the NFL. Like that's the closest guys to him. That, that's just silly. They want to stop the run. They're going to thump you. They're strong on the D-line, on both lines, really. I feel like they're just not coached up for modern football. They're pretty susceptible to scrambles, so watch Gino here. I was actually pretty confused by this because they got two high safeties. Then it just it looks like straight man from there. Double teaming right here. One-on-one, -on -one, double teaming, one-on-one. -on -one. They're running a cover zero look here. 
bringing bringing a blitz. I mean, th this was just an odd look to me to have no help over the top against four wide receivers. This route was a go. That that could have been there, but it wasn't. Gino just steps up over here. He's like, "Oh, look at all this space I got. That seems easy." Justin Fields should be able to get some really big scramble opportunities this week. Where their defense does do a really good job. These are some grown ass men along the D-line. They are big, they are strong, and they don't get pushed around that well. And their linebackers might come downhill on you hard. So, see, I mean, there's just no run lanes right there. Largely because these dudes do their jobs and keep the linebackers clean. there's eating up blockers letting the linebackers do the job Derek Barnes number 55 this dude plays like his hair's on fire against the run I love it he's fun to watch against the run I want you to watch number two in the way he's just gonna throw the offensive lineman off him and go make the play that's what I mean by these, these are some big strong dudes on the D line tosses him makes the play and 55 again we see right in there where they do struggle a little more is they're downhill, they're not lateral. If you can move laterally well, you can make them pay for how downhill that they play and their lack of lateral ability. Linebackers, Anzalone overcommitted up the middle. A lot of room for him to, to go scamper. Back on Anzalone, a few more things that I noticed. He doesn't really aim to, to play through blockers that often. Kind of similar to like if, if you've watched some of the tape on Roquan Smith, he, he prefers to try to slip the blocks. It can be effective sometimes, but it can also put the offense at an advantage at times. Take a look at him here. He actually just slips right in the hole there, fills that lane perfectly and makes the play. So this one was a good one. So if Lions defense has this many issues, how did they hold Green Bay to so, so few points last week? I'll tell you how. I mean, Green Bay marched down the field three, four times into the red zone and came away with no points in those times. They had three interceptions in the red zone and a turnover on downs. So I want to show you some of those plays so we can try to see, was it the Lions defense really taking over or was it Green Bay's offense being anemic? So here on this first one, oh boy, that's just like Justin Fields against Washington. Ball just bounced off this guy, right off his shoulder. So Rodgers was leaving it low, trying to hit him down down towards the, the, the legs. Instead, he hit this Detroit player. Here's the football, just drops in. Someone catches it right here. I included this one just because it's so damn fun. Watch number 55 here, Derek Barnes, just make this run stuff on A.J. Dillon, who is a very powerful young man. Oh, just stands him up. Oh, he's pumped up. We'll just watch him right here, straight at the ref. Get out of my way, referee. Here is the second interception for Aaron Rodgers in the red zone. Let's see what happens on this one. Oh boy, oh, that's bad. So it looks like they're running a little play action screen. I don't know where he's throwing to. So the offensive lineman, number 69. It looks like he's throwing to Bakhtiari on this. I don't really know why. Maybe it was another miscommunication. Maybe they didn't have the play call right. But like Bakhtiari, yeah, it was a trick play for Bakhtiari right there. And Rodgers just tossed it up to whoever was over there. He was expecting it to be wide open. Aiden Hutchinson, he sees what's happening here. He does a really good job of it. Rodgers doesn't get enough on the ball because he's about to get hit. Just tossing off his back foot, kind of lazily tossing off his back foot. And just leaves it where Hutchinson can get it. All right, that's all I got for you folks. Make sure to go check out the Shaving Points YouTube page. We talk everything football and give you picks weekly. Like, subscribe. Let me know what you like in the video. Let me know if there's something specific you want to see next time around. And bear down.